put up on your CAT scan of the chest, abdomen, and a bone. Uh -huh. A little tiny area that we see on the liver is, is like so small uh -huh. that we don't know whether right. it amount to anything. You know? uh -huh. Because it very well could be nothing, yeah. but you can't open your belly up and biopsy yeah. or anything. So, so that's a good news. Yeah. Let's come back now. <laughs> Bad news part of the story. Uh. That <laughs> you do need chemotherapy, as we already discussed. Right. You know, already discussed that you have a lot of what we call bad prognostic factor, you know, uh -huh. the size of the tumor and all these things. Right. So, so regular chemotherapy, of course, offers you a good chance, but still falls short of completely curing you. Of course, right. there is no cure anyway, 100%, you know. We pull it up. Just one area. Okay. Yeah, just make sure this is healed up. That's where the, I drained out under the thing. And it and the fluid irritated my skin. Yeah, let's see. Let's All right. Let's see. Why don't we do this then? Go ahead and get you going. Set up for treatment program. Your heart was okay. It was not broken. So. Oh, good. <laughs> I have a good heart. It heals fast. It does. It has been. It's been broken, but it heals fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Chai. Okay. Oh, you know, thank you. Okay. Nice. Right. Thank well, you. Now let's okay. go in the back and see. Okay. okay. Leave it, leave it to Bonnie. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, her name is Kitten. I call her Kitten. That's her name. <laughs> There's an obvious stuff some my daddy gave her. I don't use that. <laughs> okay, imagine this. Imagine you you watching them put it in into your thing, and the next thing you know, you waking up. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I want. A bunch of that. I'm gonna take her on back, sir. And uh, if you want to wait back out front, he'll come out and speak with you as soon as he's finished. Okay, no, okay. Right. Yeah, there you go. Gotta get in. <laughs> and we're off. Are you a good driver? <laughs> I got you that time. She's doing fine. She's doing fine. <clears throat> Dr. Washington's part went fine. Right. Her ovaries look normal. So Both of them look normal. So we didn't take any. So we didn't take any out. Okay. There was a little bit of uh, fluid down in the pelvis, and we drew that out. And we'll get it checked for cancer cells. Okay. But there's no reason to suspect it's going to show any. Uh, right. There are a lot of things that can cause a little bit relieved. of fluid like that. Very relieved. Just, just truly a blessing within itself that you know, things have, have have gone on and 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 appears to be at its end without a hitch and um and i'd like to you know thank god for that hi i'm barbara buckner and i'm from burlington north carolina and i was diagnosed with breast cancer 23 years ago and as of right now i'm in remission in 1989 i was thought that i had pneumonia and i was sent to dr larry crawford because simply because I knew him and that was who I wanted to go to. And so he did a bronchoscopy. He waited on the test and all of a sudden one day he just came around and he says, Barbara, and he looked at me and I said, oh no. And he said, oh yes. And he caught me by the hand and at that time he thought that it was in the lung. So they did the thoracotomy. So one month later, I was in St. John's on the beach in a bathing suit, but I couldn't do any swimming because I still had lots of muscle problems from the surgery. So following that, I took six months of chemotherapy and I did beautifully. But from there, I, I was okay until 1995. And they, at that time, they found that I had in lymph node involvement in the chest cavity. So at this point we did we did um, chemotherapy. 
Previously, I'd had two radiation treatments to the bones. So if someone had told me two months ago that I would be out here gardening and planting flowers, I would have said, no way. Actually, cancer has been a part of my life for 22 years, 23 years, which is such a long time. If I hadn't had the good support system that I have with my husband, my children, my church family, my friends, and my faith in the Lord has helped me get to this point in my life where I am now, because without that, I don't think I could have survived. Hi, my name is Terry Coble. Um, I was at work one day and noticed my underarm was sore. And as I mashed on it, I felt a soreness out under my nipple. So I went home and checked real good and I found a knot under it. Um, I had had a, a physical in September, a mammogram in November. Um, I went to the doctor who could find the knot. He did an ultrasound, couldn't see it good. I went to the hospital the following Tuesday, had another mammogram done. I went back to the doctor's office. It still didn't show up on the mammogram. I was one of the 5 to 10 percent women that it just does not show up. So it's a good thing that I did check it and find it myself. Um, it turned out it was cancer. Uh, it's stage three. It's, it's the very worst kind of breast cancer there is. I will tell you what, this looks like something they'd give Frankenstein, don't it? How long will it be before my hair starts coming out? I mean, will it be like in the first week? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it will be probably um, as early as seven days. <laughs> And probably the least would be like 10 days. So sometimes between 7 so and 10 days. I should go ahead and have it cut pretty quick, shouldn't I? And usually, Terry, when it starts coming out, it's drastic. Yes. It's not just a little bit here and there. Unfortunately, it's extremely drastic. Yeah. And does your eyebrows and everything come out at the same time? Lord, I'm going to look like a mannequin in a store. Yeah. And you know what Drew said to me last night? This was so... He was going to have to go to up to my aunt's house while I had my, went get my tooth done. He ran back there and grabbed me by the tail. He didn't want to go. He said, but mommy, you said you would never leave me. And I said, baby, I'm not going to leave you. I said, I'll always be here for you. I may have to go to the doctor. I may have to go places, but I always come back for you. <laughs> he's so afraid of leaving me that his daddy's gone and he's so afraid I'll leave one day and not come back and that he has this anxiety over me. Have you ever spoke him. to him about what I was going on? Have you? told him anything about what's going on, what to expect? All I told him was that today I had to come and the doctors were going to run uh, medicine through my veins and it was going to help mommy get better. But I would lose my hair because when I put that wig on, he said, mommy, take that wig off. I don't like it. It looks ugly. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the same way I used to wear my hair, but it was before he was born. And I said, well, baby, look at this picture of mommy up here. Look, I used to wear my hair like this. So you know what he said? Then when I had on, he said, I like it now, mommy. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. He did. But he don't quite understand. He knows mommy's sick, but he don't understand. Mom, we're going up to Taco Bell to so let them see the dresses. Because we're going to meet Mika and them over there early. Hi, my name is Zenobia Johnson, and I just currently moved to Danville, Virginia from Pelham, North Carolina, and I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, I'm 33 years old, and I have a husband, Thomas. We've been together for 13 years. Um, we have a six-year-old daughter, Tamisha, who's in the first grade. And we have uh, an 18-year-old daughter, LaToya, who is uh, a senior in high school and um, is planning on going to college in the fall. And on March the 17th, um, a friend of mine came into the office and this is just how I had felt the knot in my breast um, for about two or three months and because my sisters had had tumors in their breast and they hadn't been cancerous I really didn't pay much attention to it because I just thought that you know that's what it was and I had a friend of mine a co-worker come into the office and um, she was telling me that she was going to have to have surgery and as we continued to talk, she was sharing with me that she had found a, a lump in her breast and it was what well, was under her arm about in the same area that mine was. And 
she proceeded to tell me how breast cancer ran in her family and how um, she had you know, felt this knot up under her arm and she had went to her doctor. And so they were going to, um, you know, do some surgery to remove it. Well, I immediately told her, well, you know, I have a knot right here. And she felt of it and everything. And she told me, you know what, it's probably not anything to be alarmed about, but you need to call your doctor. Tip, tip, watch your heels. Don't mess up the grass. Thomas is very particular about his grass. Oh, the, Tamisha, please. Okay, you move, Tamisha. You don't need to get in this one. Not. <laughs> Just take it like it is. <laughs> she hiding behind the tree. Okay, it's divas. Fine, Over here. Toto, don't squint. You need to relax your face. Very good. You tell by the way that the doctor was moving and, and talking at that point that something was wrong because they didn't say anything when they came in. They just immediately started checking me. And once, um, you know, they finished checking me, it was him and his nurse practitioner. Um, he sat down and said that the, the biopsies that they did of the um, lump under my arm tested positive for cancer. And he said from what they could tell on the mammograms and whatnot that it was in my lymph node. And because it was in my lymph node, then that means that there was another source of the cancer in my body because um, when, when cancer gets into your lymph nodes, it's coming from somewhere else. I, can, I remember just sitting on the table. I was sitting on the table and Thomas was sitting in a chair. And I looked at him and he looked at me and the only thing that I could say was, wow. Prom. This is my senior prom and I wanted to be there and I wanted to stay there the whole time, you know, because this is it. This, no, we'll probably be in there crying. This, around. you know what I mean? This is it. You will never have another senior prom. I mean, and you, you have other occasions where you get dressed up like this, but, but it's not like a senior But let prom. me tell you, these people that you see here tonight, and you'll have class reunions and all this kind of stuff like that. But y'all won't ever assemble like this again, you know, all, Together. you know, that's exactly right. So, you know, you don't worry about, well, well I don't want to, you know, savor this moment because you're living the best moments of your life right now.